Hello friends, welcome to our broadcast. I am Larry Hutton and this is Limitless Life. Thank you so much for joining us again. I say again because so many of you join us each day. Uh, if this is your first time, thank you for joining us today. I love sharing the Word of God because when you learn the Word of God, God is so, so much smarter than we are. And, and if we're willing to learn His thoughts and His ways and uh, engraft them into us and start living His ways and thinking His thoughts, man, you know what? What an abundant life. No wonder Jesus said, I've come that you might have. He wants us to have this wonderful life, this uh, life where you are happy. You know you can be happy all the time. I actually have a uh, series called Happy. You can go to my website at LarryHutton.org and, and, and get that. There's so many Christians that aren't happy. And yet we, if we're Christians, I mean, you can't separate the word happy from Christian. I mean, I know there are Christians that are not happy, but it's only because they haven't learned what a true Christian is. Christ-like, if you are like Jesus, you should be the happiest person on the planet. I mean, I have just learned... Like Paul, the Apostle Paul said, I think myself happy <laughs> when he was talking, going into King Agrippa, you know, I think myself happy. I, I've learned to uh, take the word of God and apply it to my life where I get out of bed happy every day. I go to bed happy every day. I don't care if all hell's broken loose. I don't care if my wife got mad at me, if, if we didn't have, if, if a, a good, uh, didn't have a good week financially, whatever, you know, I don't care. I am going to be happy. I'm independent of my circumstances. That's what the Apostle Paul said. I'm going to have to probably teach on this sometime. We're actually teaching on believing God for great things right now in this series we're doing. And that would go right on in it. Maybe we'll just teach it along with it. I don't know. But, but um, you, can, you can believe for great things in your life. And you can believe to be happy because God put his joy on the inside of you. In fact, if you take joy and peace and uh, three of the nine fruit of the Spirit mentioned in Galatians 5, 22 and 23, if you take peace, joy, and God's self-control, you can be a happy person 24-7, 365. Even when you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, that just simply means all hell's breaking loose all around you. You just let all heaven break loose from within you. And you walk and you become a light right in the middle of that darkness. I walk right through the valley of the shadow of death. I fear no evil because God's with me. You can do that, friends. I'm telling you, I've been doing it for years and, and I, I, I've had just as much hell break loose in my life as anybody else has, but I don't let it stay. I don't let it rule me. I don't let it... Uh, um, uh, make the decisions for me how I'm going to live. No, as a matter of fact, Jesus said if we submit to God, remember James 4, 7, we submit to God and resist the devil, the devil has to flee. In other words, all hell breaks loose and you resist it, pff, let it break loose right away from you. Yeah, that's what. So I, when all hell breaks loose in my life, I just let all heaven break loose. And heaven is more powerful than hell, praise God. So we're talking about believing for great things. You can believe for great things in your life, but you got to believe the right things. And that's why we're doing this series, Believing for, for Great Things, so that we can get our minds renewed. The Bible says we have to renew our minds. Uh, we have to think God's thoughts and, and walk in God's ways if you want God's blessings operate in your life. They don't just fall on you. You know, the old saying is like a ripe cherry off a tree. Uh, God's blessings and, uh, you know, He's given us... Uh, all things. Peter, Peter said it this way, God's given you everything you need that pertains to your life and to live in godly by the knowledge of Jesus. You have to learn about Jesus and what he's already done for you so that your faith is not trying to uh, do the works of the law or self-effort, which is what the works of the law is all about. But uh, you're doing works of faith, works of righteousness, it's also called. Paul called it in, twice in Thessalonians, 1st and 2nd Thessalonians, work of faith. Your faith doing works that release your faith and then receive all of these things, these wonderful promises that God has for you, all the stuff that you're really uh, an heir of. God's given you an inheritance as a child of God. And he wants, you, he wants you to believe Him for great things. And so we've been talking about, I mean, we looked at a new, numerous ones in the, uh, what we call the Hall of Faith in Hebrews chapter 11. Already last week we looked at a bunch of those Abraham and different ones of them that the, the Bible says, by faith 
Enoch, by faith Noah, by faith Abraham, by faith Sarah, by faith, by faith, by faith. It mentioned so many people. And so we talked about some of those different ones and that if they could do that under the old covenant, then how much more can you and I, right? Come on. In fact, I've told people, you know, people, when they talk about some of these great patriarchs of old, like Enoch or like Noah, uh, different ones, you know, they, they, they say, man, I just can't wait till I get to heaven. I want to I wanna go up. I want to sit down. I want to talk with them and just find out what it was like to, and they'll mention the things that they did, you know. And what they don't understand and what you may not understand is when you get to heaven, those guys are going to be looking for you. No, they're not, brother. Yeah, yeah, they are. They want, they're going to be coming up to you because the Bible says they, they just looked forward to the things seeing into and they would have never been made perfect or complete without us. We're under a better covenant established on better promises. So, so they desire, the Bible said, they desire to look into those things. So when you and I get to heaven, they're going to come up to you and say, can I talk to you? And you're, you're thinking, well, yeah, I want to talk to you. You know, <laughs> could be could be Jonah or somebody, you know, and they come up to you. Can I talk to you? Can I ask you some questions? And, and you'll say, well, yeah, but I want to ask you some questions. And they'll say, no, 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 wait a minute. Tell me what it was like. What was it like to, to, to be under a covenant that you had God living on the inside of you? What was that like? What was it like where the Spirit of God, the Bible says you were led by His Spirit and His Spirit would show you things to come and would teach you all things and would bring things to your remembrance, whatever Jesus has taught. And what was it like to be redeemed? You know, we were always looking forward to the Messiah coming. You guys had Him come and you got to live the benefits placed on He had already come and He had already provided everything for you. What was that like? <laughs> yeah, that's so true, man. That's so true. They're gonna, people are going to be waiting to meet you when you get to heaven and talk to you. So anyway, we've been talking about believing God for great things and using the word faith, found out the word faith and, and the word believe is used hundreds of times in the New Testament. No exaggeration. We actually went to, uh, uh, talked about how many, so we won't go back and reiterate all that. But we, were, we finished in Romans chapter 10 last week and then we interjected a several things the last two programs that we didn't get back to Romans 10. So we're going to get back to Romans 10 today where we left off last week. We were in Romans 10. What says, what saith it? Verse 8 says, the word is nigh you even in your mouth and your heart. That's the word of faith that we preach. Word of faith. That's, that's believing God. Uh, the word, that word, word is rhema. It's the spoken word word of faith, the word faith is pistis. Remember, I already gave you my definition of faith. Faith, in essence, is a belief in God, in His Word, and in His ways that persuades us to speak and do everything God says, regardless of what things look like. And on a continual, ongoing basis, when things are good and things are bad, we are just going to continue to say and do what God says. That is what faith is. And... Um, and then we are here in Romans chapter 10, verse 17, which says, So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So let's pick back up there. Faith comes by hearing. We pointed out the word comes is italicized. Wasn't in the original context. So there have been people that have said, so faith doesn't come by hearing. Because we pointed out Romans says that God has get, given each one of us a, a, a portion, a limited degree of his faith. A metron, that word metron is a limited degree, a limited portion. God hasn't given you all His faith or you'd be creating universes and you'd be creating new things and you'd be creating animals and you'd be creating new beings and so forth. No, God's given you a degree of His faith and it's a degree that is big enough that you could take just a mustard seed size of it and move mountains. And that's what we already saw in Scripture last week as well. So uh, we pointed out the word comes... Um, is, in ital or is italicized, so it's not in the original manuscripts, but we pointed out if you look at the word by, the word by, faith, faith by hearing, now the word comes isn't there, so it said, so then faith by hearing. Uh, the word by is a uh, preposition denoting origin, and it means uh, from, so faith from hearing, or out, the word, the, the word by is out, uh, so faith out of hearing, uh, so it's kind of 
indicating, well, there must be something to do with faith that comes out of the Word or by hearing the Word of God. Uh, so you look at this word by, and that means it's, uh, it's really a, it denotes origin. So faith has its origin, comes out of and by hearing. And after it says, so faith comes by hearing and the word and is interesting, a primary particle in the uh, Greek language, a continuative, but it means but. A better translation instead of and would be but or moreover. Some translations say that instead of and, moreover. In other words, it's saying faith has its origin when you hear and or but it's not just hearing anything but by hearing the Word of God. But by, that word by is a preposition that means the channel of an act. So the channel of an act, I'm giving you all these definitions and we're going to put it all together to make it easy to understand. Um, so, so the channel of an act, so by hearing and hearing what? Hearing the Word, which is the Greek word rhema, the word word, W-O-R-D is the Greek word rhema, which means spoken word. So the spoken word of God is the channel through which faith has its origin. That's what it's saying. Let me, let me paraphrase. So then, the channel through which faith has its origin is hearing, but only by hearing God's words that are spoken. Hmm. So that's why I was bringing you to this passage, because if we're going to believe God for great things, we've got to understand how this believing really works, how this faith really works. That's why we spent the last couple programs finding out that faith, we're justified by faith, but faith has a work with it. Paul said the work of faith, that, that faith just left alone, in other words, you have faith, but you don't use it, doesn't produce anything. And so we looked at what Paul said, then we looked at what James said, and so then we're back here now in Romans 10, and we're going to zero in again on verses 13 through 17 because th this is really uh, helpful in understanding what you need to do if you want your faith to work in different areas because some people's faith can work to get them saved, but then they don't use their faith for anything else. Well, you can your, use your faith to get saved. You can use your faith to get filled with the Holy Ghost and speak in a brand new heavenly prayer tongue. You can use your faith to be healed. You can use your faith to prosper financially. You can your use your faith to have a heavenly marriage. You can use your faith for anything. So let's read these verses again. Verse 13, let's start in verse 13 now. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be what? Shall be saved. How can they call on Him in whom they've not believed? So what's that telling me? Well, he says, he says, whoever calls on the name of the Lord gets saved, but how can they call if they don't believe? Well, the answer is they can't. <laughs> so if someone doesn't believe that Jesus is Lord, then they're not going to call, right? It says, so how can they call, verse 14, on Him whom they've not believed? And how shall they believe in Him if they've not heard? So here we go. Then faith comes by hearing, remember? Hearing by the Word of God. So how can they believe if they've not heard? The answer is they can't. You have to hear. When you hear, then faith is imparted to you. And I'm going to show you that Yes, God has dealt to all of us, those among you. Remember Romans said, those among you, God's given to every man a measure of faith. So every Christian has a measure of God's faith. But I'm going to show you every word of God is a faith container. Every word of God is, is something you feed your faith on and that more faith is released. Um, wow, this is so good. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But how can they call if they don't? Believe. They can't. How can they believe if they don't hear? They can't. So you have to hear about Jesus in order to receive Him as a Savior. If you've never heard of Jesus, you're not going to call on Jesus. You've never heard on Him. How could you? You can't. This is what he's saying right here. And verse, the end of the verse, how can they hear without a preacher? So if I doesn't, don't preach it or you don't preach it or somebody else doesn't preach it, then nobody's going to hear it. If nobody hears it, they're not going to believe it. If they can't believe it, they can't call. In fact, we took this passage uh, backwards uh, before. Uh, how can they hear without a preacher? Uh, and so if you, if, if you preach it and you take this verse backwards, if someone preaches it, then they hear it. 
if someone hears it, then they can believe it. If they can believe it, they can call. In fact, here's what I want you to do. What I did in my Bible is, is circle or underline or highlight three words. Verse 14, how can they call? Underline or highlight that word call. And it says, how can they call in whom they've not believed? And then how shall they believe? I want you to underline or highlight or circle that word believe. How can they believe in him of whom they've not heard? And how shall they hear? So I want you to circle the word hear at the end of the verse. So you've got three words circled. Call, believe, hear. But you can't call if you don't believe. You can't believe if you don't hear. So you have to hear to believe to call. So backwards is really forwards. In other words, when we hear, we have to take this, back, this verse backwards. It's really the forward progression. Since you can't call if you don't believe and you can't believe if you don't hear, then we have to hear first in order to believe, which is verse 17. So then faith, that is to believe God's word, faith comes by hearing or faith has its origin or, or it's uh, released uh, by hearing and hearing just the word of God being spoken. So you have to take this spoken word. So then faith uh, comes when you hear. How, how shall they hear without a preacher? Uh, so you got to hear first, then you got to believe, and then you got to call. So what we did uh, last week, we took the word uh, saved, how, verse 13, how, uh, whoever calls in the name of the Lord shall be saved. And we uh, injected another couple of words just to kind of paraphrase, make it even easier to understand. We said this, whoever calls on the name of the Lord as Savior shall be saved because he's got a lot more names than just Savior, right? And so we pointed out whatever name you call on, you're going to get saved, whatever aspect or attribute you're talking about. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And then we continued adding words, verse 14, how can they call on him as Savior in whom they've not believed he's the Savior? And how shall they believe in Him as Savior of whom they've not heard? He's the Savior. And how can they hear Jesus is the Savior without a preacher preaching about Jesus the Savior? So then faith to be saved comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God about Jesus the Savior. Then we took it backwards, verse 17 backwards, when we hear the Word of God about Jesus the Savior, then faith to get saved comes. Verse 14 backwards, when a preacher preaches about Jesus the Savior, we what? Come on, look at your, the, ver, the words you circled. When we hear about Jesus the Savior, we what? We hear. When I, rather, I said, should say it this way. When a preacher preaches about Jesus the Savior, we do the first thing. What? Hear. Once we hear Jesus is the Savior, we can what? Believe. Believe He's the Savior. Once we believe Jesus is the Savior, what's the third thing we have circled? We can what? Call on Him a Savior. And whosoever, verse 13, whoever calls gets. Whoever calls on Jesus' Savior gets saved. So God's no respecter of persons. In other words, it doesn't matter who you are, what side of the tracks you were born on, what nationality you are, how smart you are, dumb you are. doesn't matter. None of that. Whoever calls on Jesus shall be saved. Jesus is Savior. Right? So we pointed that out. But then we used the word delivered because we found out whoever calls in the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word saved also in the Greek means delivered. And we found out the name of the Lord, one of His names is Deliverer. And so whoever calls on Jesus as Deliverer shall be delivered. Delivered from what? Whatever you need delivered from. It could be alcohol, it could be cigarettes, it could be pornography, it could be over-the-counter drugs, whatever it is. Delivered from lust, whatever. You can be delivered. How can they call? Watch this. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord as Deliverer shall be delivered. But let's continue again. How can they call on Him as Deliverer in whom they've not believed He's their Deliverer? How can they believe in Jesus as a Deliverer if they've not heard He is their Deliverer? And how can they hear that Jesus is their Deliverer without a preacher preaching that He's their Deliverer? So then faith to be delivered comes by hearing about Jesus, your Deliverer. Now verse 17 backwards. When a preacher, or when we hear the Word of God about Jesus the Deliverer, faith for deliverance comes. Verse 14 backwards. When a preacher preaches about Jesus the Deliverer, we hear about Jesus the Deliverer. Once we hear Jesus is the Deliverer, we can believe Jesus is the Deliverer. Once we believe He's the Deliverer, we can call on Jesus as Deliverer. And once whoever calls on Jesus shall be delivered. Whoever, whosoever. So God's no respecter of persons. Whoever, doesn't matter who it is. That means it's God's will for every single one of them. They don't have to pray, Lord, if it be Thy will, take this away from me. Lord, if it be Thy will, I won't do this. Nope. Go ahead and... Call. 
because you believe. But you have to believe, but you can't believe if you don't hear. And somebody's got to preach it. So if I'm preaching it and you hear it, then you can believe it because faith is with that word. So you can believe it. And then once you make a decision to believe it, you can call. And once you call, the Bible says whoever calls is, get, is the one that gets. Man, that's so good. Now let's replace, let's, let's do another word this time. Uh, let's take the word, uh, whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word saved is the Greek word sozo. It also means made whole. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be made whole. So you could inject miracle. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord as miracle, is that one of his names? A miracle worker would make you whole, wouldn't he? Miracle worker. Well, what about a, a, a verse we use at Christmas time in Isaiah 9, 6? Uh, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and uh, the, go uh, the government shall be upon his shoulder. His name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. All right, what about that verse? The, that verse says his name. The first thing that it says his name shall be called, his name shall be called Wonderful. If you look up that word wonderful in the Hebrew, which is what it was translated from, the Hebrew word wonderful means, the main definition is miracle. Aha, I like that. His name shall be called miracle. Well, this, this verse says, whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be made whole. So whoever calls on the name of the Lord as miracle worker shall be made whole from that, that, debilitating disease, made whole from that um, flesh-eating disease, made whole from that injury, made whole from that um, uh, accident that you had, made whole from that deformity that you were born with. You can be made whole when you call on the name of the Lord as miracle worker. Whosoever calls on the name of the Lord as miracle worker shall be made whole. Well, let's go on reading the rest of the verse because I believe this brings great revelation. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be, as miracle worker, shall be made whole. But how can they call on him as miracle worker in whom they've not believed he's their miracle worker? Look at the verse. verse we're looking at verse 14. How can they call on him as miracle worker in whom they've not heard? Or whom, uh, how can they call in whom they've not believed he's, Jesus is their miracle worker? And how can they believe that Jesus is the miracle worker if they've not heard Jesus is the miracle worker? And how can they hear Jesus is the miracle worker if someone doesn't preach Jesus is the miracle worker? So then, verse 17, so then faith to receive a miracle or faith to be made whole comes by hearing the word of God about Jesus the miracle worker. Let's take it backwards. When you hear the word of God about Jesus, the miracle worker, faith for your miracle comes. Faith to be made whole comes. Verse 14 backwards. When a preacher preaches about Jesus, the miracle, we what? Hear Jesus is the miracle. Once we hear Jesus is the miracle worker, we can what? Believe Jesus is the miracle. Once we believe Jesus is the miracle, we can now release that faith, can't we? We can work the faith, and whoever believes Jesus is the miracle worker will call on Jesus as miracle worker. In verse 13, whosoever calls on Jesus as miracle worker shall be made whole. Wow. And, and, and you could do the same thing with protector. Jesus, our protector, Wow, he's definitely our protector. Uh, whoever calls on the name of the Lord as protector shall be protected. But how can they call if they don't believe that he's their protector? How can they believe Jesus is a protector if they don't hear? And how can they hear if the preacher doesn't preach it? So then even faith for protection comes. So many people are fearful of this, that, and the other. I'm going to get, you know, I'm going to have a terrorist get me. I'm going to have a, somebody break into my house and hurt me and I'm going to have this happen to me. So many people are in fear about what somebody's going to do to them. If they would just start hearing about Jesus, the protector, they'd be protected. We had a lady in our church down in Florida that I came out of. She heard about Jesus, the protector from my pastor for a long time. He did a series on it. And then she had somebody in a parking lot attack her with a knife. He had a hose over his face. She couldn't see what he looked like, but she could see through the hose that he was a white male. And, and she said, all of a sudden she grows up. I mean, he had had a hold of her with a knife in his hand and she didn't know what his intention, whether it was to kill me, rape me, 
rob from me what, but all she did is she rose up the faith on the inside of her. She activated that faith. She called. She said, Jesus. And then she said, in the name of Jesus. And I'm so, that guy let her go. She said she could see through the hose on his face that he turned white as snow and turned around and ran. She said, I've never seen a human being run so fast. She, she, she didn't know what he saw, but she looked over her shoulder and just imagine my nine foot tall angel with a flaming sword was probably standing there. And, and, and God, when I spoke Jesus and know he's my protector, he probably let that guy see in the spirit and see that huge angel with a flaming sword. And he took off and ran faster than most humans can run. <laughs> That's because somebody preached Jesus as her protector. She heard Jesus as her protector. She believed Jesus as her protector. She called on Jesus as protector. That was her act of faith. That was her working of faith. Her faith was released, grace flowed, and she was protected. You and I can receive protection, miracles, healing. We could put that in. Maybe we would next, next program we will. We're out of time, friends. We're gonna have to pick up next program, but you can believe God for great things. I love you. Thanks for joining us. Make sure you share the programs wherever you're watching it from. And thanks for joining us as partners to helping everyone else that's watching see it as well with your finances. Have a Jesus filled day. If you would like to schedule Larry Hutton to speak at your church, event, or conference, go to larryhutton.org and choose Contact Us from the menu bar or call 1-888-887-WORD. God intends for believers to be able to apply His Word to their daily lives and get good results, living the joyful, loving, and abundant life that Jesus has provided for us. Believers are supposed to understand the Bible and be able to enjoy the blessings of heaven while we are here on the earth. But many believers, at the beginning of their new life in Jesus, did not learn the most basic foundational truths of the Bible that will carry them over all of the traps and pitfalls and on into victorious, limitless life in Christ. In this new book, Dr. Hutton addresses all the issues that every Christian must come to know, understand, and establish as true in order to lead a limitless life in Jesus. To order your copy of Limitless Life with Jesus, go to larryhutton.org or call 888-887-WORD. Join us again for Limitless Life with Dr. Larry Hutton, where you'll get practical teaching from God's Word that you can apply to your everyday life. Go to LarryHutton.org to watch this program and many others. You'll find special offers and resources to help you thrive in life. You can check on Larry and Liz's schedule and join them at a meeting near you. That's LarryHutton.org, or you can call 888-887-WORD.